Hello and welcome back to part 3 of the Fred Essentials Beginners Tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to illuminate your scene and how to properly create, delete and set up your lights. Um, to um, set up any lights you need the light editor. Uh, by default you can't find the light editor down in this quick access bar so you have to go to scene and click light editor to open it up. By default you only have the headlight, which is deactivated. To activate it you just have to click this button here. And as you can see, we have some base lighting, which we don't need right now. Okay, I'm going to deactivate the sampling. Um, we have three uh, default light uh, objects, which you can choose by right-clicking into this uh, library here. Um, just go to create and you find three of them. Um, we are going to work with the spotlight first. Uh, the directional lights and point lights work similar, but um, we won't go into much detail right now. We'll just go and see how the spotlight works for us. Okay, there we have created a new spotlight, which does in fact have a position and a few attributes you can view and edit here. Um, so where is my light created or where is it located, you might ask. Um, when you activate your transform manipulators here, you can see that it uh, was created in the origin of the scene and you just have to edit its position and uh, its attributes uh, to see some effect on your scene. Well, to reposition your um, light source you just have to find a suitable position from which you want the light source to um, illuminate your scene. In my example, I'm just going to the top of my car. I'm using uh, this face here, so I'm really jumping to um, the exact top. And that's the position I want my light to shine on uh, my car. And the ne next thing I have to do is go down in this list, open up this transform tab and then we have a few options here but the one I'm interested in is this button here. Um, this does get the position of my camera and set my light uh, to this position and as you can see when I press the button um, my car is illuminated from the top uh, from the exact spot I, um, uh, I set my um, light to and as you can see, we already have some really sharp shadow drawn onto the ground. A unique property of those direct lights, which it is um, for now, is that it draws a very sharp shadow onto the ground. So it doesn't become very smooth in the, in the process. And m you might want to create um, a smoother shadow on the ground as well as a light uh, source that does draw reflections and looks a little bit better. And for that purpose we do have the area lights. An area light is just an extension to your um, available um, direct light, which you have set up already. And you just have to enable it by clicking this uh, checkbox here, by checking it on. And then you have the uh, option of selecting a shape for it. In this case, I'm going to select the rectangle. And now I just have to find it and resize it. By default, it's uh, somewhere in the space here. As you can see, it, it is up here. Oops, It's pretty small. It doesn't have a huge effect on my scene. I may have to move it a little bit uh, closer to my object. That's what I'm going to do. By double-clicking my uh, light object in the light editor, I move my manipulators to my object and now I can interact with it as I'm used to. And as you can see, I get a smooth shadow on the ground which gets smoother when I sample my scene. Well, and if you want to make your light a little bit uh, larger, then uh, it's pretty easy to do. You just have to switch to uh, 
the scaling mode by pressing Shift and R, and then you can use those uh, triggers and manipulators here to resize your area light shape. Okay. Well, as you can see, we have no reflections. Um, this light banner here, or this um, this strip here, uh, just um, affects the scene by adding some light source, but we don't see any reflection in the in the windshield. Um, to change that and to see um, the reflections of this of this light strip here, you just have to take this option here on to see the uh, reflections in all my geometry. And as you can see, I see now the reflection of my light source. And to go a step further, I can now turn off my environment map by setting the exposure in the color correction to zero. And now you see my scene is only lit by my single um, light source on the top and the only thing I have to do now is to resize it to make my car more visible to uh, expose my car to a little bit more light and if I want to I can go into my spotlight now and um, set a different intensity value like 5 for example so it becomes a little bit brighter, for example, this. Um, okay, but one um, spotlight, one light source is not sufficient. Um, I may need uh, another one. Um, to um, do this, in fact, I don't need to do anything at all. I just have to duplicate my existing light, light source by pressing Control D for duplicate. And uh, it appears uh, on the same spot. The only thing I have to do is uh, is to move it to a more suitable spot. And now I have to rotate it. So um, I have three modes, as you know. Control W means um, I want to translate it, move it around. Control R, as we know, is to resize it. And Control E is the rotation mode. I just have to rotate it a little bit and to move it down a bit. Okay, so now it's in my way. I, I can't see anything. Um, to avoid that, I can hide the visible uh, or the visibility of this uh, object here simply by um, selecting my light source I want um, to change. And then I'm going to um, the attribute primary visibility and take that off. And as you can see, um, I can't see uh, the geometry anymore, but it still has an effect on my scene. All right, now we can proceed by adding another light source, maybe, or yeah, well, we can just um, we can just change the one we have already by making it a, a little bit wider. Just double click it to select it and then to reset it, control R. And and then just move it around a bit like that, for example. Or this, or maybe rotate a bit. Something like that, for example. Here. Make it a little bit more interesting and then we hide that as well. So now we have uh, an image that we can uh, work with and that looks a little bit more appealing. Maybe make it a little bit darker. Uh, the value of 5 is too bright. Make it 3, for example. So this part here doesn't become exact white. So this looks good already. Um, one thing we could do is to change our shadow material, which uh, cannot be seen right now because everything else is dark, but we could change um, the shadow material to something that is um, reflective and shows us that there is something like a ground. Uh, to do this, we can select 
in the dark because we know we will be selecting our ground. And as you can see, um, I got it by selecting just the ground and I uh, can work with it now. Um, then I go to my material editor, as we know it already, and I can change my plane shadow to something that will reflect something, like my car, for example. Um, I can, I'll convert it to a, let's say, to a reflective plastic, for example. I make it dark, so I like have something like a mirror, a black mirror. And as you can see, this looks a, little, a lot better than our parking garage. Well, I hope you liked the tutorial. Um, um, if you are interested in how to animate things like the wheels, then please check out the other tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.